So in September 2023 tech update video, I talked about a product from Crowd Supply called as ESP Offline Flasher, which is a tool to upload the firmware file directly to the ESP board without the need of any computer. Now for those who are not at all aware about this product, let me show you some glimpse of that video. So this is kind of a device in which it has built in eMMC uh, internal storage, kind of a flash storage you can say of 4GB in which you can you know flash the or put the firmware file then you can also put the configuration file here in this chip and once you connect the external ESP32 with this connector press a button the firmware will be uploaded on that chip again remove it and another one press a button the code is uploaded and another one press a button code is uploaded so it's a faster process hassle free process and no need of external computer or any thing you just need this device to upload the same firmware in all other devices isn't that a super useful tool like when i saw it for the very first time i was really fascinated about this product and i wanted to make one for myself as well as we also need to program a lot of projects that we sell online and the major problem that we face while programming different different projects is a single project requires a particular boards package version and a particular library version in case if you update any of the board package or library, well, that same code may not give you the expected result or may not compile as well. So it's better to have a firmware file of each code and a tool like ESP Offline Flasher, and it will make your uploading task a lot easier, a lot faster, and without any errors. So later we started our research about how we can make this kind of program by our own and luckily we found a video by Kevin in which he made kind of a similar programmer for his own development board called as Trick Board and he also published a detailed documentation about that complete programmer. So we took the reference of the documentation and we made our own offline programmer based on ESP32. So this programmer will help you to flash the firmware files into your ESP board by just press off a button and it will not just work with ESP32 board but it will also work with the ESP8266 boards as well. And in this video I'll be covering everything about how we made it and how to use this uh, programmer to flash the firmware in both ESP32 and ESP8266 module. Now let's start with making of this project. So now to make the project we'll need very few components and later we connected them all according to this schematic diagram. Okay so here the schematic is really very simple like the complete programmer is based on the ESP32 chipset and to program it we are using the USB to TTL converter logic based on the CS340 CIC later we are using a 3.3 volt converter to power up the ESP32 properly later here we are using an SD card in which all the firmware file and the configuration file of the other ESP32 will be stored and later with the help of this ESP32 board and the connectors here it should be mentioned as connector, I'll change it later. But yes, with the help of this connector, an ESP32 module will be uploading the firmware file stored in the SD card into other ESP32 chipsets. And here we are also having a couple of status LEDs that will let us know whether the code uploading was successful or there was some error in between. All that thing will be you know, indicated by the status LED and that is the complete schematic of our programmer. And later we tried to design the custom PCB for our project in as compact size as possible. And here we have put two type of connector. One is this JST connector and other is this 3 by 2 connector. And we can program the models with either of the connector of your choice. And yes, after finalizing the PCB, we gave its order directly to PCB Go Go. Now PCB Go Go is one of the largest PCB manufacturer in China and luckily I got a chance to visit their factory last year. It is really huge and they are processing around 3000 orders per day. And ordering PCBs online through PCB Go Go is really very simple. You just need to upload the Gerber file of your PCB project select the number of PCBs and color masking and later select the shipping option as per your location. Now here PCB Go Go offers 24 hours PCB manufacturing time without any extra cost if you allow to add the PCB Go Go logo on it which is really convenient for makers like us. And after that your design will be reviewed for any error and later after reviewing you can pay for your order and get it delivered at your doorsteps. Now the PCB comes safely in a vacuum packaging and the PCB quality feels really premium. Now currently they are having an amazing offer where you can get $25 worth PCB at just a dollar for all the new users and also they are providing free shipping in North America and Europe. So just click the link mentioned in the description and get your PCBs from PCB Go Go. So, so after receiving the PCB, we started placing all the surface mount components on it and later we put it on a heat bed and let it bake for a while. Later, after the SMT components were soldered completely, we started soldering the through hole components and, and after soldering them all, the final PCB looks like this. Neat and very compact. 
And with this, we are done with the hardware part of the project. And now, let me show you which code file we need to upload into our programmer to later program all the other ESP32 chipsets. Okay, so here are all the files required to flash the code inside the ESP32 module of our ESP programmer. And here we are using one library which is also provided into the same folder. It is called as ESP Serial Flasher. Like this library is responsible for flashing the firmware files into the other ESP boards. So we put it in the same folder so we do not, do not need to install it separately. So now let's open the main.ino file. So here is the complete code of this project. Now we took the code from the Kevin's project only and here we modified the pins according to the PCB that we designed. Other than that, the code is more or less the same. Now, if I explain the working of the code, then what happens is, uh, first of all, it will initialize the SD card. It will check whether the SD card is inserted or not. Later, it will check whether the SD card has all the required files in it or not. Like we need to add couple of files like the binary, the firmware file, the partition scheme, the configurations, everything we need to add. I'll let you know what kind of files we need to add and how can we get all those files later after uploading this code. So it will check whether all the files exist or not so it will check everything and once it is complete the code will move ahead and it will start blinking the green led on board now when the green led on board starts blinking it means everything is uh, perfectly fine and now the programmer is ready to upload or flash the firmware into the other esp boards so it will flash the green led and now it will wait for the programming button to be pressed so once we press the programming button or the flash button later it will start flashing the firmware file into the other ESP board and once it is successfully flashed it will come back here again it will start flashing the green LED that means it is now ready to flash other firmware files in other ESP board so that's the basic uh, workflow of the code but if we go deeply then the code is really very complex there are a lot of files involved in you know in making this process uh, successfully completed okay so yeah that was all about this code and now uh, let's try to upload this code into the programmer so first of all I have connected this ESP offline programmer with my computer using a type C cable and later here I'll select the right COM port and I'll select the uh, board as ESP32 dev module click on ok and now I'll straight away hit the upload button okay so here the code is successfully uploaded and with this we are done with the first step of the programming now in the second step now we need to get the firmware files and all other configuration files which we need to feed into the SD card so now let me show you how we can get those files for any of your uh, Arduino based codes Okay, so now to get all the firmware files, what we need to do is we first need to open that INO sketch uh, which we want to flash into the other target ESP boards. So for showing the demo, I'll be opening the simple blink example code here and uh, I'll just try to blink the LED at GPIO2. So that's the basic code which I'll be flashing into other ESP board. Now, first of all, make sure uh, to select all the boards and all the configuration settings that you want to set for your target ESP board, like the partition scheme or flash size, anything that you want. Once you are done with all the things, what you need to do is you need to go inside the Arduino settings and here inside the show verbose output during, you need to tick mark both compile and upload option. Click on OK. And now here I won't select any of the COM port currently, but still I'll try to press the upload button. Now what this will do, this will definitely not upload the code, but here we'll be getting the location of all the firmware files which are uh, going to be flashed into the ESP board. And from that location, we can get all the firmware files. So let's just wait for that. Okay, so as expected, the code is not uploaded, but here we get all the details. So what you need to do first is, you need to start copying from here, like zero cross 1000 until the end of this line, just copy it and try to open any kind of notepad on your computer and paste all those lines here. Now here we have four different lines here. So let's just separate them. So uh, zero cross 1000 is for bootloader.bin. Later I'll press enter here, zero cross 8000 for partition.bin. Press enter here, 0 cross E000 for uh, uh, boot app dot bin and 0 cross 1 4 times 0 for blank dot bin. So these are the four lines with four different kind of location and from all those locations we can get four different kind of binary files. So let's just try to get them all. So first what I'll do, I'll try to copy the location up to here. This will uh, open up the folder containing this file and now let's go to that location. 
And here in this location, we can get the three files required for it. One is the .ino.bin file, second is .bootloader.bin file, and third is .partition.bin file. So first, you need to copy all the three files and go inside the SD card and paste it here. Make sure you format the SD card before doing this step. Okay, so we got the three files. Now we are left with one more file, which is this boot app 0bin So I'll copy the location of this later i'll try to go inside that location and here is that boot underscore app 0 dot bin and i'll paste it here inside the sd card and now we also need one more file called as config.txt now i'll be providing this file uh, into the github repository whose link is down in the description now here just open up the config.txt file and here we need to match the hexadecimal values so first of all for boot name offset which is for this boot it app 0.bin the hexadecimal value was 0 cross e triple 0 which we need to mention here which is perfect secondly for bootloader name which is this bootloader.bin file the hexadecimal value is 0 cross 1000 which is mentioned here perfect second for partition let us see what's the hexadecimal value it's 0 cross 8000 that is mentioned here letter for firmware file which is do, uh, dot uh, bin the actual file of uh, the actual firmware file and the hexadecimal value is 0 cross a uh, one four times zero which is mentioned here and in our code we doesn't have any kind of spiffs memory involved so we can delete this line as well and that's pretty much it just save this config.txt file and with this we are done with providing all the important files in our sd card which will help us to flash the firmware so now i'll eject this sd card and now i'll insert it into our esp programmer and now we are good to go to flash the firmware so here i took the esp32 module uh, which is connected using the esp32 jig and here i connected this esp32 module and our programmer according to this connection diagram so here what I'll do is I'll connect this programmer via Type-C cable and just to show you what's happening in the background, I'll try to open up the serial monitor here in the Arduino IDE. Let's try to press the reset button here. Okay, as you can see, first of all, it checked the type of SD card. Later, it just checked all the files. And once everything was perfect, here on the board, as you can see, the green LED started flashing, which means uh, everything is set. And now, uh, this programmer is ready to flash the files into the target ESP. And to do that, you just need to press this flash button. And now, these steps uh, will be performed automatically for flashing the firmware into the target ESP board. Okay, so it started. And like once all the files are successfully flashed, it will give us the final message. Let's just wait for it. Okay, so here it says everything is flashed and complete, which means the firmware file is successfully flashed into the ESP32 board. And now let's check whether it is actually uploaded or not. So I'll connect a uh, LED onto GPIO2 and let me show you if it works or not. And here as you can see the LED on GPIO2 started blinking at the interval of one second, which is the same uh, code that we have inserted inside the SD card and now it is flashed inside this ESP32 module by just press off a button. So that's how you can easily program any ESP32 based module using our ESP offline programmer. And now let me show you the steps for programming the ESP8266 chipsets. Well the process is more or less the same, rather the process of programming ESP8266 is a little bit simpler than the ESP32 one. So let me show you the steps. So first thing is we need to upload a separate program into our ESP offline programmer for programming the ESP8266 chipsets. So here is that code and again we have provided the source file which is the library file here inside the same folder itself and now let us open the main.iono file. Okay so here is the code and the major difference inside this code as compared to the ESP32 code is inside the ESP32 programmer we need to add four different or five different kind of files inside the SD card out of them four were the .bin file and one was the config.txt file while in ESP8266 we just need one binary file file to be you know added into the sd card and to be flashed inside the esp266 module so for checking only one binary file we modified this complete code and now we are good to go to upload this code into our programmer so i'll select the right board and com port which is already selected and let's just straight away hit the upload button now this code will be uploaded into our esp offline programmer 
Okay, so the code is successfully uploaded into our programmer. And now we need another code file, which we need to let it flash into the other ESP modules. So similar to the previous example here also, we'll take the same basic Blink example code and I'll try to flash the Blink example code into the other ESP modules. So now uh, in this code, I'll change the LED pin to D4 as digital pin four has the built in LED on ESP266 module. Later, I'll select the board as node MCU1 0.0 okay and now i'll remove all the usb connections and i'll hit the upload button now definitely the code won't get uploaded but we'll be getting the location of the binary file here inside the output window so let's just wait for that okay so as expected the code is not uploaded and now let's find the file so here is the location of that uh, file after zero cross zero and as i said previously we do have only one single binary file which is dot ino dot bin so we don't need to copy it and paste it separately inside the notepad rather we can simply copy it from here and i'll simply go to that location and here is the bling dot ino dot bin file so i'll copy it and here inside the sd card i'll paste that file that's it. I'll eject this SD card from here. Later, I'll insert the SD card into the ESP offline programmer, connect the USB cable. And now we are ready to flash the firmware file into the ESP8266 module. So for that here, I took the ESP8266 chipset and this ESP8266 programming jig. And later I made the connection between the ESP offline programmer and the ESP8266 module according to this connection diagram. So here now to show what's happening in the background, I'll open the serial monitor in my computer. Let's just try to reset our programmer. And as you can see, it found one file, which is bling.ino.bin. And here on the board, the green LED also started blinking, which reveals that everything is perfectly fine. And now it is ready to flash the firmware file to other ESP modules. So now I directly press the flash button and let's see what happens. So it's trying to connect with the ESP266 model. Now, sometimes if it doesn't connect directly, you can just press and hold the boot button on board and press the reset button once to make it go inside the boot mode. And now it got connected and it started flashing the firmware file in our ESP266 module. And the firmware flashed successfully and here on ESP266, the onboard LED started blinking at the interval of one second, which means that the firmware file was successfully flashed uh, inside the ESP266 module with the help of our ESP offline programmer. And that's how you can easily program any of the ESP based modules with our programmer. So that's how you can use the ESP offline programmer to flash the firmware file into your ESP boards quite smooth, fast and without any kind of errors. So how was this tool according to you? Was it useful or it was not? Share your thoughts down in the comments of the video. And also if you really like the efforts we put on making this kind of educational and useful content, well a like will definitely be appreciated. Appreciated. Now here what I think about this product particularly is I think it is a must have tool for all the electronics and IoT product manufacturers or the project makers as it definitely makes the process of uploading the firmware file in multiple boards quite easy and saves a lot of time and efforts. And here I have a good news for all the makers who are interested in getting one for yourself. Well we are selling this programmer on our website techiesms.com at quite affordable prices. Well you can find the link of that project down in the description of this video so do check them out and yeah with that being said i'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video until then explore learn share with me techie sms <laughs>